major breaking news into our studio. The Cleveland Browns announcing that Deshaun Watson will have to undergo season ending shoulder surgery this after a season in which he has been struggling he's not been fully healthy most of the year and candidly he's not played particularly well but there have been flashes and we are coming off a huge come from behind win that he helped author against Baltimore last week leading many including myself to wonder if he was about to turn it on and this team was about to get this thing going well now if they're going to they're going to have to do it without him for the record the a point spread at ESPN bet on this game went from minus three and a half to minus three. So at least initially, he is only worth half a point as far as Las Vegas's perspective Saying is there's concerned. A chance. So, so here's my question, because you just ran through it. They had other. They had those Josh just joining us. Dobbs. Who everybody loves. They, yes. Uh, they had Jacoby Brissett last year. They had they let both of those guys go get different situations, and they had Dorian Thompson Robinson, who's a rookie. They also have PJ Walker. It's going to be the PJ Walker show now. Oof. But we talked about how PJ has played well, but in moments there are costly interceptions. But now you know it's almost like last year again. You know these set of games. Deshaun's not here. This is the backup show. So I want to go back to what you said because you pointed out how poorly Deshaun Watson has been playing, and yet. There is something, maybe it's just me, but there was something in my mind that always felt like if he's there, they have a chance. If P.J. Walker and Dorian Thompson-Robinson are their quarterbacks, do the mm. Browns have a chance to win that division and make a playoff run? No. And they, Would they, they have otherwise? I mean, they have a chance to get to the playoffs. Like, win the division, I think, unlikely. They have a chance otherwise. I didn't think so, based on the way that Deshaun Watson was playing. We all remember how he was in Houston. And that's what we all are thinking, like, maybe, maybe. That's maybe. why he got $230 yeah, million. Why I got, yeah, I get it, but he ain't been yeah. that guy. No. So, like, to me, honestly, this is a terrible turn for this team. However, it's better than what they were going through before, where it's like, are we going to have Deshaun? Maybe we'll have him, because he no was way. in and out of the lineup. Yes. Is he is he going to play well Literally for a quarter? Is he going to yeah. play well for, or terrible for a half? Like, Honestly, like this, if you put aside the name, put aside the numbers, I think it'll be nice for them to be like, all right, this is what we got, this is what we well, do. Well, we me, don't have to find uh, out on Thursday nah, that our quarterback uh, not nah, nah. And to your point, let me say what the hell need to be said. No, this ain't the same sentiment if you lost a Patrick Mahomes no. or you lost a Dak Prescott or because he wasn't playing well, no. right? Like, there would be a different reaction if we thought Deshaun Watson play was putting the Cleveland Browns over somebody else. It wasn't. Mm -mm. It wasn't. He had a great second half against the Ravens. And you know what great was? 14 to 14, ain't really do nothing crazy, scrambled a couple times. When we talk about great, we talk about this man threw three touchdowns in the right. second half. Or he, he changed the rule. This defense a, and this quarterback no. and this run game and O-line. I'm going to tell you, I disagree, I, I disagree with yeah. this, both both of them. And, I, and look, respectfully disagree by disagree. Put the, put the stat back up of what, but they're of what they did. I was just going to say I'm just the gonna same let you know, dude, you look at it. Yeah, so, so when Deshaun Watson is playing, they're five and one. Uh, let's go back to the Kenny Pickett, Mike Tomlin conversation we just had. It's about winning. And if Deshaun Watson finds ways to win, when you look at P.J. Walker, dude's the one touchdown and five picks. You, we just talked about Josh Allen turning the ball over and how difficult. I don't care how good your defense is. When Deshaun Watson is in there, if they're turning it over less and scoring more, you have a better opportunity to win. I'm not telling you he's like, – I think what happens is everybody falls in love with the $230 million number, right? Like, get off the number just go, we're winning okay. games when he's starting. I don't care if the guy – I don't care if he's – I'm in, I'm out, I'm in, I'm out. Whatever okay, it is. I feel like it's double dutch. I'm trying to jump in here because it's somebody now. who actually covers these games. Ooh, right. And I've talked to Deshaun Watson after the game about, hey, your defense really balled out. Talk to me about that defense. It is the defense. They have a Super Bowl caliber defense that I hope does not get wasted this season because Jeff uh, Schwartz has done a fantastic job with this unit. Now, Deshaun has not played well. It is not the offense that was going to carry yeah. the Browns to the playoffs. But Deshaun and I'll his escapability, his, when the play breaks down and he's able to create, heard it. that is what you're banking on, but it's not there. May and I, again, Miles It's Garrett, not there. They're 5-1 and one when he plays. What, what, may I respect five and one. Yeah, It doesn't done. matter. Yeah, but it we got to have, matter. Yeah, we gotta have context the, of why they 5-1. Okay, one. okay, it was a I, big six last sure, week. Sure. Okay, sure. It, bro, listen, like, I'm, I'm, I'm with you. This is just like when people used to say Jimmy 
Garoppolo led the 49ers. No, no, no. To. I'm not it's, saying he's leading it, but I'm saying when you look at the alternative of what they look like when right. he's not playing, okay. that's what now you're going with. So, so let me you ask can you this, hate, you you coach, hate Deshaun Watson. You coached in the league. Let me ask yes. you this. Yes. Now that Deshaun Watson is gone for that's the season question. with yeah. the injury, is your play your plan is should help. P.J. Walker, right? You sure is it so. different than when you kind of thinking, well, Deshaun might play, he might not play? Do you think they're better with P.J. Like Walker Stefanski? going forward than, when, than what we've seen because he know he's the guy? No. Okay. No. I think, right. I think I don't I don't think you I don't think you're gonna structure the problem with what PJ Walker is doing is he is putting you in a situation that loses games in the NFL and especially important games. If you're turning the ball over at that clip, one to five ratio, right? Like you can say whatever you want about Deshaun Watson, you can say whatever you want about the defense. But at the end of the day, if you're scoring more points and turning it over less, you give your team a better I mean, chance to win. I mean, the game literally he's started. Not worth, the second you, play of the game like, was Deshaun like, Watson. You're like, he's leading them. I'm not play. saying you're leading anything. But what I'm saying is when he's on the field, they are a better football team when then he's off the okay. field. And we can say, we, we can beat it around all you want about, is he worth it? Is he leading? Tell me about this defense. Great. We can do that with the Steelers. We can do that with the 49ers at times. We can do that with everybody at times. But at the end of the day, if you're a better numbers, when that dude's on the field, you can't hate on what he has done if he doesn't have to go throw they for a thousand have, yards. It I is just clear have they have head. a better chance of getting to the playoffs and winning playoff games with Deshaun. But you can also say That's this it. defense is what sure. has carried them. But here's the thing now you go back again, pull it out, big picture. This is now two seasons of a five year deal. The clock is ticking. Like, when he gets back, it's like the whole point of this is you are good enough to win a Super Bowls. Now you have, now the clock is like, okay, you got three years to do it. Right. All right, so that came yesterday just after 11 o'clock in the morning Eastern time. About a half an hour before that, Trayvon Diggs, the brother of Stephon Diggs, and, of course, himself a star NFL player with the Cowboys, tweeted for the second time in something of an inflammatory manner First, he had said that his big brother needs to get up out of there, and then he tweeted, let's not forget, he, obviously referring to Josh Allen, didn't start going off till bro got there. So that suggested, and we talked about the first tweet <coughs> yesterday. Jeff, the first thought in your mind this morning in our meeting I thought was fascinating. Dumpster fire. <laughs> That's where the Buffalo Bills are right now. This is freaking ridiculous. I'm just going to be real with you. Like, when you think about firing a guy after a loss, that was a bad loss and putting it on the offensive coordinator. Let me just let me just put this in reference for you. Since Ken Dorsey's been the OC, you know the two teams that have more points in Buffalo, the Cowboys and Eagles. You know how many QBs have a better QBR than Josh Allen since he's taken over? Patrick Mahomes. That's the list. That's where we're talking about. They, they have the, the second best QB and the third best offense in the league. And that's the fall guy. It's absolutely ridiculous. Listen, I, you know, the whole dig situation, who's upset? If it's Josh, is it him? None of that matters. As the, as the head coach that took over the defense, that from 2017 to 2022 with Leslie Frazier as the defensive coordinator was number one in the league, has now gone to 16th. You have 12 players on the field for the field goal that you end up losing the game, and you're going to fire the OC in the middle of the season where you have a potential to make the playoffs and potentially win in the playoffs? It's a dumpster fight. And let me tell you, now everybody in that locker room, it's some every man for himself, bro. That's exactly what Himbo and I were talking this morning when I walked in. And I'm on one. I'm going to tell you, this is frustrating. Because let me tell you, when you walk in, it's ridiculous that this dude – and let me just tell you the first thing that came to my mind. Mike Tomlin. Yeah. And you know why, dude? Everybody in the world has called for him to fire his offensive coordinator. They have been out game nine games in a row, and somehow they're six and three. And that dude is steadfast and ain't moving off his mark. He don't care what you think. He don't care what I think. He cares about what he thinks, bro. And he'll go toe-to-toe -to -toe with it. And now we got a guy who's second and third, and the dude gets fired? Are you freaking joking me? You get fired for that? Good heavens. Jump in here, Swaggo. Oh, we Jeff. Jeff is ready bro, to go. I almost want to no, pass the wow, he, was eating, he was eating <laughs> prime rib at 10 o'clock last night. So he's still full. Go. Jeff, I agree with a lot of what you said, but the reality is players get coaches fired. Yeah. This is a reverberation of Josh Allen descending. And when people think about that, they're going to look at the stats and they're going to look at the touchdowns. He's a descending player. Yeah. And I think what this organization looked at was our quarterback is not getting better, and he's still suffering from the same issues that we've seen him suffer from. Jeff. 
Newsflash for everybody in America. He got $250 million. Mm -hmm. Ken Dorsey probably got $12. Right. All right, that was the best decision for them to make the make their $250 million guy feel like they're doing something. This is a save face move, to your yeah. point. I understand it. And we and look, I've had this conversation. Ken Dorsey creativity ah, left to be sure. some concern. Sure. I thought he should have leaned into the run game a little sure. bit more, like he did at the end of the Denver game, and things start happening for this offense. But ultimately, this became about the quarterback and the OC. I don't think it, be, and, it was and, about and the organization. You, but not in this week. Like that's a, after the season, right? I feel like, you. like that that's my my issue isn't that you, if you if you got to part ways, I'm all for it, right? Like their business is business. Not after but this man, game. not after this I game. Like, the question is, that is if they only had 11 men on the field for the yeah. first still, kick last night, would Ken Dorsey still job. have his if job? 12 men were not on the field. That's the Ken point. Ken Dorsey would still have a job. That's right. Today. I mean, to and me it suggests that it wasn't about that game. There's something else going yes. on that we don't know about. They, he wanted Ken Dorsey up out that building, and this was 100%. the first opportunity they could get him up out that building. And I don't know if it's because of Ken's relationship with the head coach or the relationship with Josh or whatever, but you don't fire a guy after a year and a half just of really good, productive, statistically at least, offense after a year and a half just because there were 12 men on the field. This suggests that there's a lot more going on, and I try to extend some reason and logic to the head coach. It's not just as crazy as it looks to us, because it looks absurd from the outside. That's right. So, so let's, let's clear the deck now and let Kmart go. And I will remind everyone that before the opener this season, Kmart said, guys, if the Bills lose to the Jets on Monday night, there's going to be trouble. You know that team. You were a columnist in that market. You know the inner workings better than most people do. You saw this coming. What is going on there? There are three things that made me concerned about the Bills. One was when McDermott wanted to move on from Leslie Frazier. He wanted to run the defense because it was very Mike McCarthy-like, saying, Kellen, Kellen Moore, no, I got it from here. I want to do this my way. So now Sean McDermott gets a defense fine. Then we had Stefan Diggs in the OTA situation where he did not show up. Yeah. And Sean McDermott was the one who said, I'm very concerned about the situation. While all his players said, no, this is no, not a big deal, the head coach is saying, I'm very concerned. And that's when alarm bells went up because I was like, something here doesn't make sense. Then you have Trayvon tweeting. And Trayvon knows exactly what he's doing. Yep, for sure. And so – and and – I covered the Bills Raiders game in week two after they lost to your Jets on Monday night. Yeah. And Josh Allen admitted being this talented is a double edged sword because some, some of these throws look amazing, win games. Sometimes those same throws cost you ball games. It is week 11, and we are still talking about the same issue with Josh Allen. And Josh Allen and I sat down before the Monday night game, and he talked about how accountability is key. We've been talking more. Guys in the locker room have been owning up to stuff that they are doing. And Josh Allen, week after week, looks less like himself in these podium pressers talking about the mistakes that we're making, and he's the big reason. Yeah, and, and, but listen, when Brian Dayball was off his corner, this was there's no different conversation, right? Like, he's still making those same decisions. The issue is that they, they didn't go get a second receiver, right? So Gabe Davis has one hit off the hands and becomes interception. So, like, now all of a sudden this thing is, is, is snowballing into a situation that could have been handled either before the trade, de tra trade deadline or before the season started. And so just to sort of put a, a, a bow on this thing, here's the the one thing I will caution for Sean McDermott. At some point, you run out of other people There's to blame. Else to blame. It wasn't Leslie Frazier. Okay, he's gone. It wasn't uh, Ken Dorsey. Okay, now he's gone. As you said, Josh Allen's not going nope. anywhere. Nope. So if this thing doesn't get better now, there's only one person left to they blame. They're still reeling from losing to the Cincinnati Bengals. Yes, playoffs. that's right. Yes.